Welcome back to Canadians at Cafe Lee's Bigger Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Dr. Anton, and this is the other host, GJ Spencer. Hello. Hey, this is episode 86, and um, we're getting very close to the end of uh, the current season, season 18. And um, with that, is going to be bringing in not only a new season, but uh, new players on the PC. So we thought it'd be a good time to go over um, kind of a re- refresh our new player guide. Uh, so we're going to talk about playing Vigor, um, what to expect when you're starting Vigor, uh, and show you a bunch of screenshots from the game, and, and you know, just talk about the experience of Vigor. Um, so hopefully that'll uh, that'll be helpful to you. And um, you know, if you've been playing Vigor for a while. You know, uh, some of this, most of this is probably going to be uh, old hat to you, but you never know. There might be some new stuff in here that uh, might be helpful as well. So uh, please stay tuned for this. This is our new player guide. Or if there's you something do... we missed, uh, <laughs> let us know. Yes. And it's and, and for sure, it's not going to be exhaustive. Um, you know, we're going to just do our best to cover most of the highlights. Um, there is, uh, and we will talk about um, things that you can do when you first start Vigor. Um, as we go here, but we're also going to maybe split some stuff up into another video to come um, as we go. So, uh, but yeah, um, we'll get into it right away here. But please, first, like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Leave comments below. We do appreciate it. Um, and as DJ mentioned, if uh, if there's something uh, that we're talking about that we might have missed, or uh, or you think we should have uh, mentioned something else about, please put it in the comments below. Uh, I'm sure new players will appreciate it because any you know when you're first getting into this game, while it's maybe one of the uh, easier uh, of this style to get into, um, there's still a lot to learn, and any little thing can help a lot. So, all right, and this is good. And this is obviously what we're going to be showing is going to be mainly you know from the Xbox version, but it should translate to any version. Um, you know, controls. We're not really talking about controls. We're just talking about the game itself. Um, and we don't know what it's, at this point, we don't know what it's going to look like on PC yet. It should look pretty much the same. We've seen little bits and previews from um, the developers. So it still looks basically the same from what they've shown us. But there, you never know. There might be a, little, a few little differences um, at first. So, yeah. We will basically just get into it. Um, so, yeah, you're starting bigger. Uh, what ha- What's it like? Uh, it, it, I, and I actually went through this again today because it's been so long since I've gone and started a new account. Um, I figured, okay, start from scratch. I um, created a new account on a different email address on Xbox and just started right from scratch. Um, and I don't even, and some of the things I ran into, I don't even remember from the first time I played it. So there's like things when you first go in, it asks you stuff like um, how you want. Um, some of your settings to be uh, like if you want to invert your your uh, your your up and down look or not. I don't remember them doing that the first time I went through, like four years ago or for whatever it was. So I think that might be a new quality of life thing they've added. You know, just getting some of your settings going when you first first start up, um, and then it's going to take you through, ask you if you want to go through the um, uh, the tutorial. And so that's what we're not going to be covering here is the tutorial. We're going to kind of break that into a, a separate uh, video going over the, the new tutorial because it has changed actually quite a bit, um, even I think since I last saw that they had updated it. So I think they've done some updates to it even since I last looked at it. So, um, But we do uh, recommend going through the tutorial. Um, it's definitely worth it. And it is something that if you don't go into it right away, it is something you can later on go back into um so you, you always have a chance to do the tutorial even if you didn't start out with it right away um but yeah we'll just bring up we're gonna you know basically show you screenshots and and go over you know what what it does what each thing means and and talk about it so that's what we will do now and the very first thing um and this is is kind of new as well when you first boot into uh, to Vigor, you uh, you know you get the standard welcome screens, 
Um, but one of the newer things that they've added in is these um, it's sort of a daily reward kind of structure. So um, each day when you log into Vigor, you'll get a new reward. And that, that wasn't something they had originally. So this is, this is something new. Uh, it's an incentive um, to keep you logging in. You know, you keep getting something new every day. Um, because when you first start this game out, you're not going to have very much of anything. Uh, going through the tutorial will give you a few things. Um, but even the stuff you get from the tutorial, you won't get to use right away. Um, because when you start out, they like to... Uh, and this actually might, I'm not sure if this is part of the tutorial or not, DJ might remember, but um, I couldn't even, like all of the screens were locked for me at first. Mm. I couldn't even go, the only thing I could do was choose um, to go into an encounter. Um, do you remember, was it like that for you as well? Uh, no, not not four years ago. This, so this was, that was part of the new player revamp. Uh, they did... Yeah. I want to say like four or five seasons now uh, okay. where they locked it down. It, it's because they basically wanted to not kind of encumber some or make it cumbersome for like newer players. Cause there are a lot of tabs, right? So there are, uh, that, yeah. that's why they, they kind of like streamlined it is like basically like you're going to your encounters. Step one right. type thing. Right. So, yeah. So, and like, so as I mentioned, this is the uh, daily rewards, but then, you're taken to what's basically the first um, the first screen, and except for the very first encounter slot, which right here shows you encounter Fisk Fabrique, uh, everything else is locked out. All the tabs at the top are locked. Um, on this particular screenshot, you can see I have one tab still locked because even playing it, I think I, I did about five or six encounters uh, with this account. Um, I still had that one locked screen, so I, that, that hasn't unlocked yet. Um, but I do have screenshots we can show you from my other account. Uh, but yeah, just the main thing was unlocked um, within this screen when you eventually either unlock it or depending uh, whatever point, you'll see that there's at the top, there's three encounter maps you, to choose from. And below are uh, two alternate game modes that you can choose from. Uh, encounters, they're all basically the same, you know, just different maps. You, uh, they, they typically stick around um, when a new map rotates in or one of the slots. It's usually in around 45 minutes or so. Yep. And then, um, and then, yeah, it'll, so you have a 45 minutes to try to get into that. And it typically takes a couple of minutes, some, sometimes a lot quicker, sometimes a little longer to get into an encounter. It, you know, it'll vary based on um, number of players in your region. Um, they have the, the matchmaking. Uh, we'll usually try to find people in your region and, and on your system. Um, uh, right now for crossplay, the only real crossplay there is in this game currently is Xbox and Switch, Nintendo Switch. So um, if you're playing on Nintendo Switch, it tries to get you, you know, into a game with other Switch players. Quite often that's not possible, so it might take a little longer as it expands out its uh, pool of players. Um, but then first, to start looking in your region. Then as, after a little bit, if it can't find people in your region, enough people for an encounter, it expands out. So that's why it can take a couple of minutes to get an encounter, sometimes longer. Other times when it's really busy, you'll get in right away. So anything you wanted to add on that? Uh not necessarily um the only reason why you have that lock screen um is because you don't own a cosmetic yet aside from your basic green coat there so you go the minute you, you will own uh, a cosmetic it will unlock that uh uh that tab so that's a good point yeah. yeah um as we go through we'll talk about different ways you can get cosmetics but yeah uh actually one thing looking at the um I only noticed that after you switched to this screen, but the previous screen, the day seven reward, 10 double XP tickets. tickets, 10 double XP tickets. That's huge. That is wild. That is absolutely wild. I didn't realize that's what it is because they didn't have it back in our day. Yeah, um, they didn't. But like, man, that, that is crazy. 
Uh, it is especially wild. with with the uh, <laughs> XP required for like this current season. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point because um, we'll be talking about that next, anyways. So this is the first uh, screen you see is is the encounter screen. Um, as I said, when you're first starting out, this is the only thing you'll be able to do. And the only encounter you'll be able to go in is the very first encounter. And that unlocks after, might even be the second game, second or third game, I can't remember for sure. But it, it unlocks for, yeah, it might be three. Then it unlocks the rest of these and starts unlocking more of the upper tabs as it takes you through the story. Uh, the next screen, as you mentioned, um, are tickets. And tickets are a way to boost encounters. Um, there's two different um, categories of tickets, uh, personal tickets and lobby tickets. Um, and they pretty much, you know, affect each thing equally. Um, may, it makes sense just by the name of them, what they do. Uh, personal tickets are, are mainly just uh, for you. They only affect um, you and lobby tickets can affect everybody in the lobby. Um, when you're, uh, when you're going into an encounter, um, there's a right before, uh, as everyone's loading in, there's an opportunity to boost and, uh, boost in the lobby. There's, um, three different ways to, well, two different ways to boost it. Uh, there's boosting the loot in the lobby, meaning that it'd be more plentiful as you're looking around for loot and, uh, boosting the, um, the crate, the air crate that you can uh, find in the lobby. Um, there's typically up to two air crates. Uh, there's one that's dropped from a plane, typically near the end of, the, of an encounter. Um, the last five minutes or so of an encounter is when it usually drops. Um, and then there's um, a version of that that you can find within the encounter in a special red um, storage box. If you ever find that red storage box, there'll be a, um, the same kind of airdrop in there. And if it's been boosted, it'll be the same level that it's been boosted to. Um, yeah. Uh, and then um, personal tickets, as I mentioned, only affect you. And then there's a third boost you can do um, on the lobby, and that's to yourself again. That's uh, insurance. Yep. So Vigor, like other games that are, are similar, like Escape from Tarkov, um, there's, there's um, uh, Warzone from uh, Call of Duty. They're the kind of games where anything you take into them, uh, if you die, you lose. Um, and anything you find in the lobby or out in an encounter and bring back to you, you know, comes back to your shelter and is something you can either use later on or in your shelter. So it's a very, it's a looting, looting experience kind of game. Um, the insurance can help you, uh, hold on to anything that you have or find in the encounter if you get killed. So if somebody kills you, insurance lets you take it back take your what you found back out there's i might be a couple of things insurance doesn't cover um yeah does it cover point, mementos yeah now it does originally it did it not does? Okay. but uh yeah it was like two three seasons after the fact when mementos were originally right. released that it did not cover it uh but uh ever since then uh yeah mementos uh have been covered uh literally the only thing that uh is not covered is the airdrop the airdrop itself that's correct oh that's right yeah that's the main thing it doesn't cover uh cover so yeah insurance um it can be a little pricey uh and so like myself i i typically don't get get insurance unless like say the um the lobby's been boosted quite a bit if somebody's boosted the lobby a lot then i consider getting insurance um you know it's it's uh on a, a typical day it's like 60 crowns to ensure your your um your loadout and anything you you bring out. If you delete stuff from your bag, it doesn't bring that back. So if you mm -hmm. delete stuff from your bag as you're looting or you know you uh or you delete a gun for whatever reason and then you get killed after you deleted stuff, it doesn't bring back anything you've deleted. Only thing that's any what's currently in your bag. Yeah, comes back. Exactly. Yeah, and and, and these, honestly, yeah. we like Doc and I kind of have like the same uh, thought process for, for insurance because it is kind of pricey. Like insure it for the loot, like the resources that when it's boosted, like you know three four times more, because um, guns can easily be replaced. Uh, you know yeah. there is that gear fear type thing where it's like oh you have you know a special issue a uh, gold. Uh, weapon or maybe military grade purple um that you may not want to lose but 
weapons can easily be uh you know uh regained or like you know mm -hmm. uh you know accessed and stuff like that so definitely like look more towards uh covering it for those resources and like the minute you get into one of those lobbies that's super boosted and um you know you do have insurance it's like go look for that loot uh as quickly as possible because if you die it's like you know game yeah. over so you want to make sure that you kind of maximize what you're able to pick up right yeah fill, fill your boots and just just go for it and if you can get out great but if you happen to get killed at least you're covered um and then the other type of tickets there's these personal tickets we were talking about so there's two ways to to boost it's usually with crowns um originally it was just with crowns then they've been introduced these um tickets that you can buy uh and tickets are a way of making it kind of discounting it so it's mm -hmm. uh unless it's a special event um it's usually 30 crowns to boost um the loot or 30 crowns to boost the crate um when you go to you can buy tickets in the store and uh when you buy them in bundles it, it reduces that amount and so you can get a number of tickets and then the cost per tickets cheaper than it would normally be to pay the crowns to boost so that's the advantage of them um but then there's these personal ones which are a little different uh, and they only boost for you and it's um one is like double the parts and the other is double the resources so anything you found in the encounter when you come out if you have that active it'll double it makes sense uh, so it doesn't actually affect anything within the encounter it's just whatever you pull out of the encounter gets doubled i think it's at, I'm, uh, it might be at the end screen when it's calculating experience on that is when it doubles it and then of course there's one called double xp uh so pretty pretty um standard if you have that going it, it lasts for 24 hours for when you start it and uh it doubles the xp you get in an encounter uh because there's other ways to earn xp um but this only counts for if you're in the encounter uh when you're back at your shelter as we go through this um ways you can get xp are through things called challenges and opening crates this won't count for that now there's special events that um uh, the bigger uh devs and um company will do called double xp days they'll usually have one or two in a season it's usually and two at least yeah yeah, very, very, yeah, usually two. And they're usually like a three day event. They'll have them uh, quite often on a weekend, but also sometimes during a week, a week, uh, during the week. And um, when they have those events, literally every XP is doubled. So, and if you have one of these double XP tickets running, it'll pause during the event. So it won't double, double. Um, but it, every XP will, will double. So like when you log in every day, you get 300 XP. So on a double XP event, you get 600. Opening crates, you get double the XP for each type of crate. It's everything. So it's, it's um, those are really handy. So keep your, you know, it's really worth subscribing uh, to their newsletter or um, following uh, bigger, the bigger um, game on uh, the different, different social medias because uh, they announce when like a special day is coming and when they have a double XP one, it's, it's, you know, keep your eye open for it so you can get in and, and maximize your experience. Um, they also have other events called um, uh, booster apocalypse events, and those can be based on game mode. So it'd be like booster apocalypse for encounters, or it could be booster apocalypse for shootout or eliminations, which are the other two game modes. And they'll tell you which one it is when they're having one. Um, and what that means is usually it's half price to, to buy boosters during those. Uh... I think 33 percent 30 33 percent oh, off 33 percent, not half price that's right yeah i think there was it's like true. one one time there was like a half off type thing but i think that was like once but okay that might have been a special thing. event kind of yeah. thing yeah okay but those are the types of special events that the vigor devs like to put on every once in a while during the season so uh keep your eyes and ears and when you log in it'll it'll announce if one is coming or if one's on so during your title screen, uh, yeah. it doesn't hurt to read it because sometimes they're making announcements yeah. like that. Uh, and there's also on the bottom left of uh, your like uh, of this screen of the yeah, uh, that that screen. The screen. bottom left, it'll actually have a big red uh, banner uh, that will say like double XP or booster apocalypse yeah. type thing. Um, and it should be noted too uh, if you have booster tickets. Um, 
during those events, it will prioritize using those tickets and not your crowns. So uh, it may not be the best idea to use your, your tickets because technically you're paying a bit more uh, right. through the tickets instead of the discounted 33% not of or whatnot. Uh, it'd be kind of cool if in the future they add like a toggle type thing where it's like, you know, use my booster tickets or use my crowns. But uh, currently uh, it just prioritizes using the tickets. Right. Yeah. That, that's a good point. Cause I, I, never, I didn't think of that. And yeah, you're right. Yeah. It'll, it'll always default to using the ticket first. So that's yeah. uh, to be aware of if you, if you want to boost um, maybe hope someone else boosts yeah. who doesn't have tickets for uh... you. Did we talk about the booster tickets for shootout and elims? No, we did not. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're we're mainly talking about encounters here, but um, the other two game modes, uh, shootout, which is a um, kind of like a one you versus everybody in the yeah. lobby, run around, shoot everybody, you get killed, you respawn, and keep going until the time limit uh, finishes. Um, there, there's booster tickets for that one. Uh, and, and boosters uh that's for boosting um the reward so um in in, in shootout better crates uh okay. depending on how you know what you rank in the shootout at the end um you're going to get some kind of reward sometimes not always like if you're at the very bottom you may not get anything but if it's been boosted um it boosts the rewards usually starting from the top of working its way down yeah. so there's more people can get rewards when it's been boosted or and better rewards too yeah, um, and, and eliminations is similar. Um, they have a, a special crate that you can get that can be boosted as well, and more people can get rewarded with it. Nope. Um, but oh, no, no, that is uh, oh, it's a right, multiplier. right. So uh, for the boosters, it's a right. score m multiplier, which is typically ten crowns, um, or unless you have the tickets. Uh, and then there's also uh, the unlock uh, a loadout. Which is uh, three crowns in the pregame lobby, and then within the game, uh, if you choose to unlock it, it'll be five crowns. But basically, uh, eliminations. Um, there's five different sets of weapons uh, that you get to choose from, but only one person per uh, on the team can have that, unless you yep. use one of these uh, uh, lockout tickets or loadout tickets. Um, and then that way, you can unlock it, and then someone else could have a duplicate one of those weapons. Duplicate sets. loadout. So. Yeah, um, you know what? Uh, and we'll put links in our in in the description here because we have done episodes on eliminations and on I think on shootout. So we'll yep. link to those episodes as well. So you can, if you want more information on those game modes, you know, check those videos out as well. Um, but yeah, uh, you could use tickets for unlocking those things, but you can also use crowns. So if you don't have tickets, crowns are are, are uh, an alternate, the yep. main way to to do it. So. Um, yeah, so that's uh, let's go on here. So that was uh, tickets. I'll get uh, DJ to talk about this next one, which is uh, the store, uh, the feature store. So the feature store, uh, typically, um, every day, there's not always a discount. <clears throat> You'll see a discount, um, it'll be highlighted in red, uh, type thing, but it basically shows off various cosmetics, um, where you could also get uh, a crafting plan for a certain weapon. Uh, so in this case here, there's a crafting plan. I'm not 100% sure which one that is. Uh, yeah, I, I should they, have highlighted it. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> uh, they they all typically look very similar type thing. Um, but if it ever, if there is a crafting plan here, it's typically on 10% discount. Um, and these are just, uh, it's a store where it highlights, uh, you know, special cosmetics during events where it's like, you know, um, St. Patty's Day, uh, you know, Easter, there will be uh, the cosmetics. And typically when it's something brand new, they'll actually show it, but it'll be full price. But then maybe in a few days, it'll show up again uh, at a slight discount type thing. Um, right. But that's the first tab for it. Uh, like I said, it's it's very cosmetic. So you'll have full outfits or, uh, you know, headsets or gloves or backpacks, uh, facial paints um, or face paints, I should say um weapon skins uh and, the, and whatnot uh the next one you have is the general store uh which literally has everything um that's yeah. not in there but you have your full outfits uh headgear eyewear facewear uh backpacks gloves all the skins for the various uh weapons in the game 
uh, and down below uh, the crafting plant. Um, so technically, yeah, it's hard to see, but just below my face, as you can sort of see, it, it looks like a piece oh, of yeah. paper. There's yeah. that kind of that's for the plans. So you can actually go in there and get and buy plans. Uh, yeah, because yeah. typically, you know, originally vigor the only way to get crafting plans to craft weapons was to grind uh, for airdrops within encounters. Um, and then <clears throat> as time went on, um, you know, it, it's been slowly added to the feature store where it's like you didn't know when something uh, crafting plan may appear in the feature store. Uh, and now they've added it to the general store where literally every crafting plan that you do not own uh, will appear there. So uh, if you're impatient, uh, and you just don't want to like grind, um, you know, for all the, the crafting plans and there's something specific that you want, you can literally just go there and spend crowns. Now, it's not cheap. They're fairly expensive. Um, but that is a way of acquiring uh, the yeah. crafting plans. Yeah. So typically, each season that comes out will have one or two plans quite often. Um, you know, it might be if they've released a new weapon for that season, they'll have the plan for that weapon. Um, or sometimes if they do a new consumable, they'll do uh, the plan for that consumable within the battle pass. And then that's the only way you can get it for that season is just through the battle pass. Um, yeah. But then after that season, uh, it'll typically, I'm not sure if it's a season after or the season after that, where it'll typically start showing up in um, reward crates. So there's yeah. a get a, a plan and reward crates and then to buy them as well like as as Deepa mentioned i believe the last time we were told was it was two seasons after the fact right so yeah it might have been <clears throat> two seasons that's why i couldn't remember for sure yeah, yeah. but may, maybe that's changed um uh, i'm not sure but yeah the last that we've heard yeah and then there's ne the next uh scene yeah uh the next scene is uh so this is the premium packs uh this is where you know you could uh buy packs that uh can include cosmetics or uh actual outfits um like full outfits and whatnot uh there's even a starter pack that's uh pretty cheap where you get a decent amount of crowns uh as well as some cosmetics and some weapons uh you know you'll have your high end uh pack which uh this is canadian pricing so it's 90 dollars canadian um i don't i don't remember what it is like us it's like 70 dollars or 60 dollars. yeah it's, like it'd definitely be cheaper yeah um but uh yeah that's what the premium packs uh basically is um yeah and, and if you don't mind spending the little extra mo the money uh, it's really worth kind of getting the um the eradic eradication essentials and the annihilation arsenal when you're starting out um, they give you some crowns, which is not bad, but they give you a lot of different weapons and ammo for those weapons, and um, even some and consume some consumables as well. So if you don't mind spending, like here it's like six fifty, ones on sale for eight ninety five, but they're they're cheaper ones, um, and you get quite a bit for them. So and they're the kind, I think I'm not sure what uh, there are some like the starter packs one I think you can only buy once, and these yeah. other two are ones that uh you might be able to buy multiple times i can't I don't, remember but they're decent I, I, price i think i can't all remember premium packs are, i think all premium packs are a single purchase type thing uh potentially yeah like, like because usually it's an outfit that you don't have so um yeah i don't, I don't you sure. know i never tried to buy one that i've had the outfit already for yeah i'm pretty sure it's it's a single purchase even those eradication essentials and annihilation arsenal um right and and all uh, it should be noted too, like all these other ones. So like right now we have like uh, the eighty nine ninety nine goes to the north. So that's the premium pack for this season. But you look at the other ones; um, those are all from previous seasons type thing, essentially, um, that have been kind yeah. of brought back, but uh, also kind of discounted. Yeah, because uh, the pre the big premium one comes with like two thousand crowns, so you get a lot of crowns out of it. You get a special outfit, and you know, and typically it's going to be that season's weapons in the crate, maybe with, with some other stuff as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then the previous ones, yeah, you don't get the same number of crowns, and that's why it's discounted quite a bit. It's just you get a couple hundred crowns, but you get the outfit and a few things as well, so it's nice. Yep. And then the last uh, shopping screen, uh, you have your crown packs, uh, mm -hmm. which. You know, uh, they, they vary from 200 uh, uh, crowns to uh, the more you buy, the the more bonus you have, which, you know, is yeah. fairly common in 
other games as well where you get the bonus um you know right now you have your dirty rich tycoon which is on sale apparently for 90 dollars um uh, yeah, th- this is where you yeah. buy the in-game currency. Uh, you could also generate some uh, from your shelter once your shelter is upgraded, your antenna, um, and you could also get some uh, through crates as well. Um, yeah, you know if you're lucky enough. Yeah, so there are ways to generate crowns, which is which is nice. But sometimes if you're trying to finish a battle pass or you, you want crowns for boosting, you'll, you'll you'll you might come and say, okay, I'll, I'll get one of the packs to get some crowns. Okay, so next we have the battle pass, um, and this is like a typical battle pass. I'm just showing, you know, we and every season we will do a video going over, you know, at the beginning of a season, going over the current battle pass, showing what you get out of it. Um, and but is how it is is there's like 50 levels to the pass. Um, there's a free tier, which is the top row, and then there's the paid tier. Is if you actually own the battle pass, you'll get the stuff on the paid tier. Mm-hmm. Um, the and, way they work it. Oh, oh go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, I was going to say uh, too. If you don't buy the battle pass right away, uh, let's say you make it to level like thirteen or something like that, and then you buy the battle pass, you will still get all unlock everything previously uh, on the page yeah. here as well. Um, so yeah, it locks you, everything up to where you are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're not missing out on anything. So, uh, but you you get a bonus, or the the benefit of buying the battle pass early is you get. Uh, like in this screen here, you look at level 10, uh, you, there's a 5% XP bonus. Um, that's the benefit of getting the battle pass earlier um, is yeah. those XP boosters that come at every uh, fifth level. Right. Yeah, every five levels, there'll be an XP boost. I think it's every 10 levels, you get uh, what's what's called a, um, what, what's a, the, the title. emblem? Title, thank you. Title. You get the title, which is a special badge for the season, and it gets um, it starts out kind of basic, but then it gets nicer and nicer as you go on. It gets like added on to. So um, each season has its own titles. Progressive, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, um, when you buy the battle pass, um, like here, it shows you you can upgrade to the premium battle pass for six hundred ninety crowns. Uh, you also have the option when you go to first buy the battle pass, you can buy it with. Um, an additional 25 levels right away. Um, and that's usually about double the price almost, not quite double the price, but it's around there. Um, but then you'll be wherever you're at. So if you're at say level 13, as DJ mentioned, mm-hmm. when you buy that, if you add the 25 levels at that time, you'll end up being level 37 or 38, 38 at that point. So yeah. it, it, that can give you a really good boost depending on your, you know, if you're, if you're playing part time, you, you know, you can't put in, you can't grind as quite as much then having the extra 25 levels can be a boost. And I think there's a third option where I think you just buy the whole thing. Like it just gives you everything. Yep. I can't remember. I don't know how much I think it's <laughs> like maybe even close to double that again. Um, and as you go, um, say you have the battle pass or not, you can buy levels up as you go. So uh, if you just need, if you're having trouble get, and you want to get to the next level or you want to, or if you're a few levels away from finishing near the end of the season, um, you can buy those last couple levels with crowns. As the as you go farther into the battle pass, it gets more expensive, and that's because you need more XP to finish each yeah. level as you progress. So yeah, for like for example, like uh, this season here, uh, like buying the last five levels is two hundred crowns per level. I think it is. Yeah, so. per level. Yeah. So it it adds it gets up there fast. So yeah, yep. I guess it depends on how completionist you are. If you if you want to try to finish everything or not, it, it it's something to keep keep in account. Um, and also usually battle plans are are getting near the end of the season too. So yep, yeah, low forties about uh, is typically when the consumable will be, and then the weapon might be a couple levels after that. Um, yeah. And and it should be noted too, like uh, when Doc was mentioning about buying the twenty five levels with the battle pass, um, there are quite a few people in the community who they'll play until they get to level twenty five, and then they'll buy the battle pass with those twenty five <laughs> levels, just because of the grind, right, and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, like they want to get you know at least the, the plans and everything, um, and especially like as the seasons have gone along, they've increased uh, the experience required to level up type thing. Um, where yep. like honestly, like this season is it's actually been quite a, a hot topic where it's like casual players are struggling to to make it. 
Uh, it, it it is tough. I am one of those people as well. So like I I usually get to like level twenty five and then buy the battle pass with the twenty five levels because yeah it's it's it it's been the last few seasons has been harder for me because just time commitments to yep. to finish it. So I do that myself. Um, of note, um, partners which DJ Spencer is a partner of uh, of the bigger game. <laughs> yes. uh, at the beginning of each season, it's usually a few weeks into a season. Um, they get given uh, from bigger uh, codes to give out. Um, depending on the system you're on, it uh, it could vary. Like so, with Xbox, um, they get battle pass codes. So you put that code in, and it gets you the battle pass at the level you're at. So if you're at level 25, you you get the battle pass at that point, and then you have to grind the rest of it. Um, so the only disadvantage to it is if you're a casual person. You don't get the option to buy the additional levels like you do yeah. when you're buying it with crowns. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, and we'll see when it comes to PC, when when that eventually does come to PC, um, we'll see what that one is. But those ones are usually for um, PlayStation and Switch are crown codes. So you'll get yep. uh, typically, I think it's like a thousand crowns. Uh, uh, you, potentially you can get one from the... Yeah develop from the partners yeah uh you're saying it's definitely enough to buy the the battle pass yeah. um yeah not quite but, enough to get like the plus yeah. 25 levels but it does give you a boost towards yeah. it exactly and we should I also say that as oh yeah I it's like 700 like seven, or yeah it's 720 crowns i think the the total packs or something like that i i forget i'd have to Maybe. go back and see but it's it's definitely not a thousand yeah. but it is it is enough to buy the the battle pass but it's like if, if you have the battle pass already it's like boom you could buy some cosmetics or boost the lobby or whatever yeah. you choose buy, buy right. some booster tickets um whatever you, you choose so. yeah and yeah with uh with the xbox it was a like microsoft wanted I, th and I think it was a microsoft limitation or the other ones were limitations where they couldn't give out battle passes and so they had to do crowns i think that was yeah. the way it was i think i think it's that because yeah uh originally when we were just on xbox uh i remember where partners at the time were actually able to do uh crown pack code giveaways as well so um it, right. it's probably like a sony slash nintendo uh yeah they don't want to give away things well, they, they don't mind. I guess they'll give away crowns, but they won't give away battle passes. So I don't know. So yeah. PC, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, if they can do it, it might just be a battle pass code, same as they do on the Xbox, because it's going to be Steam. So I, I don't know if there's any, I don't think there's those kind of limitations on Steam. So we'll see. I don't think so. Either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's you know something to keep in mind. So when a new season comes out, um, check out the partners. They'll usually be on streaming the game. And at a certain point, and they'll usually announce when they have them, they'll be able to give out codes. So they'll do, usually do some kind of contests or something for people who need codes, and you'll be able to mm -hmm. potentially get a battle pass that way. So yep. keep your eye open. Um, but yeah, and I'm not, we're not going to talk with the, and you see in the screenshot, there's a thing called Legacy Seasons. We're not going to talk about that because it's going away at the end of this, as we're recording the end of this season. Yeah, It's not going to be there, so don't worry about it. And we may have to do a, like an addendum to this video after it's gone to see what they've done, you know, what they've added, but we'll see. Next, um, we have challenges. So uh, challenges are uh, sort of a daily, uh, there's daily and seasonal um, uh, rewards you can get for doing different things. Uh, you can't quite read all of them here. And because this is a, a new player one, there's an additional story challenge at the top. So that'll go away after usually 10 or, or so games, depending. There's so many of them. They actually, um, those ones will cycle as you finish them. So um, as soon as yeah. I do this foul play <clears throat> one, a new one will show up. Yep. There's about 10, 10 to 15 story challenges. Yeah. Uh, and, and the one that I got stuck on uh, because I have access to the preview builds, which was like a brand new game. Uh, the, I had to play a, an encounter with a friend. So it was like, uh, I had to uh, get in a game with uh, another partner. And then I think at 1.2, I had to detect uh, other outlanders with a signal. So I had to, like, again, queue up with <laughs> against someone. <laughs> so I could. Yeah, it, may, it can be tough if you're uh, it, in the preview build. I can imagine it'll be really tough. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you when you're playing the game, um, like for me, when I'm doing this one, as I'm just doing these 
to uh, to get these screenshots. You know, if I got to a point where I needed to play with a friend or or detecting people wouldn't be so bad because I'm playing in the standard pool, but play with a friend when I'm on an alternate account might be a little harder. But it was I'm just doing this yeah. for the for the screenshot, so it's not my regular account. But there's like headshot outlanders and encounters. You know, you see you know one or two. The rewards will typically range anywhere from 250 crowns, and they can go up to a couple thousand, depending or 1500, uh, 2000, depending. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I said crowns. <laughs> You're right. XP, um, uh, XP reward, uh, yeah. and then usually there'll be something with the XP reward. Like here, you'll see there's like parts, there's um, or or uh, resources or consumables can be part of the reward as well, depending on um, how hard the challenge is. The harder the challenge, you know, the yeah. bigger the reward. Yeah, you can get crates, uh, mm -hmm. crates, all sorts of stuff. And there'll be challenges that could be um, done in the shelter sometimes, like craft so many of a certain type of weapon um, or get shooting range. There's um, In the game, uh, when you're in your shelter, there's a shooting range. You can take any gun you own into the shooting range and play around in the shooting range. But then there's also um, little uh, challenges within the shooting range. Uh, each time you find a weapon and have it as part of your um, uh, inventory, of available weapons, you'll unlock challenges for that weapon. So if it's a brand new weapon, you first time you go into your shooting range after you got it, it'll say you've unlocked, you know, uh, these these challenges for this this weapon. Uh, and there's like a little interaction thing you can go into it, interact with it, and and then you can see all the different type of weapons you've unlocked. And these um, five challenges per weapon. And and it's just uh, there's like it doesn't get you anything other than if there's a challenge asking you to do it. Uh, otherwise, it's just for seeing how good a, you know, trying out the weapons, practicing, and try, trying to best your own time. You know, um, there are, there's like three levels of um, metal you can get, depending on how quickly you, you do it. Um, I get four if you don't count not getting a medal at all. <laughs> it just, you know, you completed it, but you didn't do it fast enough to even get a bronze medal. But there's bronze, silver, and gold, so. Um, but yeah, those are the, so those those are the type of challenges you can finish within your shelter. But there's quite often challenges you have to do in encounters, and there will also be challenges. They'll say go into shootout and uh, try to survive a shootout without getting killed to to, to complete it. Um, so those are ones to look out for, and and eliminations have their own ones as well. Yep. Uh, and then <clears throat> once you're done the story challenges, uh, the tab will actually just say daily. <clears throat> instead of daily and right. story so, yeah yeah just like a yeah it'll change it that changes yeah uh there's also seasonal challenges <laughs> now at this level when you've just started you won't see any seasonal challenges you'll just see uh progress further through the story so i think you maybe have to finish the story before you can unlock the seasonal ones yep um but then once you do unlock it and i'll show this is from my other my main account you'll have potential to do um try to do up to 50 um of these seasonal you have the whole season to try to finish them and obviously some are easier than others um some can be as simple as um collect all of the vinyl records and i say simple um when you're first starting out it's going to take you a long time to get all those vinyl records we'll talk about that when we get to mementos but if um if it's a a later season you've been playing for a while and you have collected all the vinyl records already if it if it, that's one of your challenges it'll auto finish for you right away yeah, but more often than not, you're going to be trying to finish these, and it's like kill 20 Outlanders um, with uh, consumables. We'll talk about those as we go. But um, so they get tougher, but then of course the rewards are greater for for the higher ones. And as you start on um, finishing them, uh, you'll get check marks along the bottom, and for every um, 10, is it? Yeah, for every 10 you finish, there's a little. Um, you can see a crate behind uh, DJ's head there. Yep. It starts opening up more and more as you finish it. And then when you finally, finally unlock it, you get a special reward if you can finish it in the season. It's typically a few gold crates, um, a special cosmetic, and then usually a skin for a weapon, I, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah this, this season they changed it up. Uh, it's mostly all uh, like accessory cosmetics. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't even see what the season was. Yeah. And we're getting close to the end of it. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, they can be a bit of a challenge. It's obviously a challenge to finish them all in time, especially if you're a casual casual player like I am. Uh, and I also play on multiple systems. So 
uh, I try to get them just for the XP because even if I'm not trying to get the reward, they're worth a lot of experience and they're a good way to help go through the battle pass, especially on those double XP days when they have a special event because you can double that XP as well. So Yeah, because you'll only claim uh, or redeem like the, the completed rewards once you go into this tab. So if you don't go into this tab, you're not going to actually claim uh, like the completed uh, seasonal challenge. So That's right. As Doc, as Doc was saying, uh, you know, if you wait until there's a double XP uh, event, then the minute you go into this uh, tab, then you're going to get redeem them and get that double XP at the same time. Yeah. And if you need more, any more information on the types of challenges, we do have a video on that as well. We went through on um, the when they revamped the challenge system. We talked about it and the different types of rewards you can get. So check out that video for, for more info on challenges. Um, also, as you can sort of see here at the top of the challenges, this is a little kind of a bar showing how much of the season is left. It used to be that they actually told you in days, but then they sort of switched this bar system. And so when you're last third, and then usually by the last couple of weeks of, a, of the season, they'll start ticking down days. Um, yeah. But at this point right now, it's just uh, showing bars. So. Uh, what's next? Uh, the shelter. Oh, um, the shelter. Yeah, so this is uh, the shelter where you have uh, different uh, areas where you can improve your shelter. Uh, the main one uh, is literally the first one, uh, your crafting table, uh, which as you level up, you're able to craft uh, better weapons um, as long as you have the crafting plans for. Um, if you have like weapon parts for them, you don't even need the crafting plan. You could craft them at any point. Uh, but the 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 higher you level up your crafting table, the better um, you could uh, craft better weapons. Um, now here at the bottom, um, you could kind of see below sure. Doc's yeah. camera uh, yeah. is the different resources that you actually have currently in your shelter. Um, <clears throat> the various different uh, improvements. Uh, or areas of improvements uh, require different actual, uh, you know, resources. Um, so uh, typically, like, um, I think the first one is a crafting table, and then the level two is your wood log, which gives you materials, which allows you to uh, craft uh, items. Um, and then as you do improvements, because pretty much every um, shelter improvement um, can do up to 13 levels. Uh, except for the, uh, which one is it? Is it the, the wind uh, turbine? No, not the wind uh, turbine. The uh, the uh, um, the generator has yeah, five gen levels. Yeah, generator only has five levels, um, but everything else has thirteen. So, yeah. Um, yeah then, as you can, see, yeah, it's it's hard to explain. And then I should have shown you pictures of what the shelter looks like. Yeah. And you know, obviously, you'll see your shelter when you first go in, but um when you first get into your shelter, it looks really ratty. And as you can see, there's like 13 levels to the shelter across the top. And as you build more improvements, um, it, your shelter will start getting nicer and nicer. Even if you, um, and then you can see certain improvements only unlock when you get to certain levels of your shelter. So like right now, it's like five of six. And then when I hit that sixth improvement, it unlocks the next level of the shelter for me. And uh, yeah, as you mentioned, like there's different things. There's food production, and uh, food production is a kind of an important one, really, um, at first, um, because there's uh, something I didn't show here, which I probably should have got a thing on. Um, maybe I got a screenshot. Of it. I'm not sure, but uh, there's this thing called the charity um, section, and it's where you can donate food. And why would you want to donate food? I don't know. It's it's, it's sort of helped. I, I think it's like a it's story wise. It's you're helping your faction. Um, you're sending food to to um, the people who you're kind of teamed up with. Well, it's hard to less fortunate outlanders. I think less fortunate outlanders. Is. Yeah. Um, as you're going through the story mode, it, it seems like you're you're sort of starting out recruited into a bit of a faction. It's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, you can you can build up your food and uh send that food for a weekly uh reward and the weekly reward is uh crates so they and there's um five levels of crate there's a common crate uncommon rare military which is purple and special issue which is gold uh and so you know the more food you donate 
you know, the more crates you'll get start, you know, going up the tier. And so food production, and there's two different levels of food production, which is hard to point out here, um, are rat traps and um, uh, plant boxes. Uh, so rat traps can get you more food. They're usually really good generators, but they have to be cleared out at least a couple times a day if you want to maximize your food out of them. Um, the plant boxes um, don't give you quite as much food, but you can go a couple of days usually and not max them out. And so collect them, you know, when, when you can. Uh, so the combination of those two things um, can get you food. You can bring food out of encounters as well. Um, but when you get your engine going, um, you can potentially make enough, you, you can easily make enough food in a week to donate to the um, charity box and get all five crates. And, you know, you need, I think it's 10,000 food to get all the crates. You know, if you start out with just trying to get the first couple of crates, it's like a couple hundred food, but then it goes up to 10,000. Uh, yeah, it's fi five, 1,000, 2,500, 5,000, yeah. and then 10,000. There you go. Yeah. So uh, getting your food production is, is kind of important it, and it's a good, it's a good um, goal uh, to, to get more crates because the more crates you get, it gets you experience and potentially get you more plans, gets you more weapons, resources, everything out of those crates. So yeah, there's um, upgrades here for uh, as, as DJ mentioned before, you can start generating your own crowns. Um, and I think typically you can get, I think, is it like 10 crowns? A, is it 10 crowns a day or so approximately yeah. when you get to the higher levels? Yeah. Once you're maxed out, it's 10 a day. Yeah. The generator, as you mentioned, only has five levels. And, but what it does is it allows you to build multiple upgrades at once. So as you start, you can only build one at a time. Early levels of all the upgrades go fairly quickly. It's usually like, you know, a couple minutes per, but then as you get to each level above, they go longer and longer to build. Yeah. Um, so there's one at the very end, which is the wind turbine, which uh, helps reduce the building time of upgrades. Um, there's one that'll generate metal for you, uh, which it, it's a weird one um, because there are quite a few things in these upgrades that require to scrap metal to build. But it's almost to get to level 13 of the scrap metal. It's almost like it, it costs yeah. more to get it than than you're getting out of it. It's it's <laughs> it's really it's a, it's a weird it. upgrade. It, it's it's almost not worth it. It's just for completion. You know, at some point yeah. you want to complete it. Um, there's um upgrades that'll help you reduce the crafting time, and the cost for consumables, and the consumables are things like medicine to help heal you in encounters. Um, special tools you can use in encounters to, you know, for uh, for an advantage, that kind of thing. Um, and then I think the last one that I didn't mention. Oh, there's a couple of things that I help with your food production as well. So there's like the rat traps, and then there's the box of plants. But then there's an outhouse which gives you manure for improving your output of your box of plants. And there's a, a wood smoker which helps attract more rats apparently. <laughs> and then the last thing would be the. Um, uh, I think technically it's your your cooking deconstruction. better. You're, you're cooking, you're cooking better. better the rats or something <laughs> like that. You're improving your cooking skills or something. I don't know. Yeah, not sure, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> you're yeah. you're smoking the rats, so they're they're worth more uh, more food than as opposed to eating them not smoked. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but the last thing is um an, uh, is an upgrade for improving your deconstruction. So as we get to the end of the uh, tabs, one of the things is you can deconstruct. Um, almost everything in the game that you you have to get materials. And at the very top, you can see I have like 3,000 materials there. Materials are used for built, making like weapons, um, consumables, or whatever you use from that material pool. And so deconstructing is a way to get more materials. And then there's a, and there's a couple things like the wood log and what they're called like box of her herbs for some reason. Yeah. Apparently you can use herbs to make things as well. I think that's probably for the medicine in theory. Yeah. But it's it's just general materials which you use for everything. So your gun is part herb, part, you know, wood or whatever. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. But that's that's your shelter. That's and it has all the different things you can make out of it. And as you increase each one, it takes longer, but also gives you more benefits. So yep. Because I think the, uh, the like level 13 of the upgrades are like 
it's like a week long uh, upgrade type thing or something it's like a, that. It can be it can be quite long for sure. And one thing I should also mention, you can um, track. So if there's a particular upgrade you're trying to work towards, um, the uh, on the next box, the X button. If you're on top yeah. of that um, upgrade and hit X, what it does is it'll track that resources so that when you're in an encounter and you um, bring up your info to see um, what your challenges are you're working on or whatever, it'll also show you what yeah. you're trying to collect. So you're thinking, oh, I need metal. So I want to make sure I grab whatever metal I find because I, I want you know to build this particular challenge or upgrade. So yeah. tracking can be helpful if you have a goal in mind for your shelter. Um, another like little tidbit. Um, so for your shelter level too, once you pass a certain shelter level, you've locked, unlocked it, like Doc said. But if, let's say you like your shelter looking ratty, you could literally go and select like yeah. level one and click on it. And uh, you know, a few seasons ago, they've added animation, so you'd actually see like the transition to whichever level um, you you would choose. Um, yeah. and, uh, another little tidbit, uh, level seven is probably the, the most important one, uh, mm -hmm. because that's when you unlock the arcade game on the second floor of your, uh, shelter. Uh, yeah. so, uh, in your yeah, bedroom. It, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's like a catch all almost. Right. Cause it's like your yeah. bedroom, your, your study, your TV station is, but apparently uh, where you store your crates. Cause I'll, you see a pile of crates yeah. up there, you yeah, know, exactly. haul them all the way up to your bedroom. Because, you, you know, you want to be in bed while you unpack a crate and see what's in it. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, yeah, just a few other tidbits about the yeah. shelter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, and, and the game, it's like a, a, a match or it's like a, a straight line five in a row kind of game where you're trying to get five in a row yeah. and, the, and the computer's trying to stop you kind of thing. Yeah. So, it's... Yeah. yeah, it's like connect four against AI, but uh, it's it's five in a row um i yeah. i always i i knew what the name was originally when it came out and i it slips my mind right now but uh there i don't remember what it's called it. either but yeah. uh yeah anyways it's fun i need i yeah. want it for no, it leaderboards is. i need a leaderboard for it uh, yeah that would be it. that'd be great <laughs> anyways yeah uh so that's the shelter tab you know showing you all the things that you can upgrade in your shelter and, and eventually build Oh, I see. I have to go to the next one. Give me one moment here. We're just going to do that and then bring that up. Here we go. That's the next tab. We're, and this is we're showing on my account because I hadn't unlocked it yet on the um, on the starter account I, I just made. Um, but this is basically the cosmetics um, tab. So as soon as you get a cosmetic, this will open. And it shows you everything you have available to you. So any outfits you've unlocked or, or you know, gotten through... Um, crates or whatever because you can get stuff through crates as well mm -hmm. um uh what else? oh yeah so basically it's all uh, there's like bags different backpacks you could be carrying um different gloves you can you can you can customize quite a bit um there's two types of outfits there's um the outfit sort of like what i'm wearing here which is generally um pants boot your pants boots and your top is like one piece and that's that's a, a standard kind of out, outfit and that allows you to also play around with what you're wearing on your hands you know any hat face stuff you have going on so it gives you a bit of uh, other customization options options you can do but then they have what's called an outfit set outfit set and it's um one where you put the outfit on and it's pretty much covering almost everything for you it has you know gloves hat everything usually so maybe there'll be one thing you can change on it, you know, personalized. But otherwise, it's you're you're wearing the whole set, and those are typically things like there's um a radiation suit that you can get that's head to toe. You're just that's what you're wearing, um, and there's a few others. There's like a big snow suit that pretty much yep. covers you all up, you know, almost like those old snow suits when you were a kid and you're like bundled up and you can't move. So <laughs> that kind of style. But there's a different there's a there's a bunch of different outfit sets, but then you know, there's two categories for outfits, and that's why. One's just more basic, but it gives you more customization um, yeah. choices. So, yeah. And if if there's uh, a piece of, or if there's an item that's not compatible with like your outfit, it actually won't show up as an uh, as a an option. So like uh, right. I'm thinking of like the tin. There's a tin foil hat. Like literally, it came out as a April yeah. Fool's joke. Uh, not this year, but uh, the previous year. Um, so. Uh, it, with certain um, outfits, it 
it's not even an option you can't wear it so right. uh just in case you guys are, are wondering like hey where did this item go in uh my outfits or uh, in my cosmetic collection uh that's why it won't even list it because it's not compatible with uh, that current you know uh outfit so you, you may have to to switch it up um just to be able to see it yeah and and vigor's really like they have a lot of different styles of outfit like when you start out obviously you um you're you're wearing what's called the raincoat the green raincoat um it's just a standard kind of patched up green raincoat you have whatever pants you have a bag um and that's about it um but then when you uh, eventually unlock this kind of thing you can see or go into the shop um there's like a lot of different versions of that same raincoat you can get orange you can get yellow you can get blue or whatever there's a lot of different versions of of each outfit typically um like this is like a, a hoodie outfit i'm wearing here and there's yeah a lot of different versions of this hoodie so you yeah. you know if you don't have it it might be in the store you can get it sometimes they have promotions where you can potentially get something um i know on xbox and uh right now it's just xbox uh partners have uh, quite a few partners and these are original partners i should say um campaign so people, release well, partners. From campaign release partners um, have special bags. Um, so you can yep. find the special backpack or not. It's like a bag, but they'll have their logo on it. So you can get those still usually. Um, if you if you find a campaign release partner out there, um, they may have a code that they can still give you to get it as well. And there's a websites that track some of these things too. So you might be able to find some of those old codes if they're still available because they were typically limited to yep. how many that could be got so if they're still available you might still be able to get some of those old bags but just fyi there's um special ones out there that you may not be able to get um that sometimes had special ways of getting them mm -hmm. uh, but yeah those are outfits uh another thing under customize are gestures uh when you start out everyone has the hey yep. <laughs> hey um, where you just wave and then say hey that's a way of greeting outlanders um you don't see them here but there's like some of the basic ones you start with are like pointing there's a lot of different pointing ones um yep. and that might be mainly it pointing and hey <laughs> uh but as you play as you can you can find like in in crates or sometimes they have done it in seasons before but they don't release the emo um the gestures quite as often anymore and nowadays you can also get them through the store but yep. you can get the special ones like there's a salute uh, finger snap there's some kind of trolley ones where you can give someone the finger just like <laughs> yep. um they have quite a few emo emotes so which is it can be fun and good ways of communicating with people or um sometimes troll them if that's what you're into <laughs> yep. trolling the peoples um so that was a screen where you could assign to your wheel which ones you have available to you uh, weapon skins, every weapon pretty much has something available to it. Uh, sometimes they're special skins that were like theme related based on a, a season. Like here we're showing the, the M1911 pistol with the special police line skin. That was from, uh, I think, season three. Rivals, yep. Rivals, yeah. And so there's, you know, quite often weapons will have season specific ones. Uh, but then there's also a lot of alternate skins you can get that are just like colors or um, different types of camo that aren't related to a season. It's just ones you can find or buy. When I say find, I mean in a crate, not out in the uh, encounters or anything yeah. like that. Um, sometimes when you pick up, say if you kill somebody in an encounter and you pick up their weapon, you'll see it has a special skin on it. You won't get to keep the skin. It's just just for that as you're using it in that encounter. But when you come back to your shelter, it'll have whatever skin you had on it you have a you know assigned to it if you have yep. one at all because every weapon has a basic look without any kind of skin on it um but that's weapon skins and then the last thing you can customize is your title and this is literally just as you're loading into a game and you see all the people loaded there some may have titles like just saying hey this is person has this next to them and the titles can be something like you know they've gotten to the certain level of a season um typically uh or they've they've done so many of a certain thing like this particular one is i've extracted with one airdrop so that's yeah. a special see and that goes up to i'm not sure what does that go up to um they they get um better and like 10, higher 000. and higher is it up to ten thousand airdrops five thousand or ten thousand <laughs> i don't know yeah there might be there are some people who uh, really hard grind yeah. this game 
but there's like number of kills you can you can say how many kills you've gotten to so far um and it only shows up to that point so like if you have like 5,000 kill or say you have like 2,600 kills there's like a 2,500 kill one it only shows that you've gotten 2,500 yeah. kills so they, they won't know you have 2,600 but whatever yeah um there's one for tr distance travel there's lots of different ones out there so yeah uh, having all like the the vinyls or all the trolls and finding all the of that. a particular type of collectible yeah there's um special ones for that too so those can be little ways of bragging hey i found all the different uh vinyls so i'm a vinyl master um yep. yeah but that's that's the different type of titles that you can just display next to your name as you're loading into a and that's the only value they have really yeah, yeah. uh and then next is the crate one Yep. So Which here you, you have the various crates. So you have the special crates for uh, the elimination mode and the shootout mode. So if you win those, um, you know, you can get those. Well, eliminations, you're not get, guaranteed an elimination crate. But uh, no. if you score a certain amount of points, yes, you will get an elimination crate. Uh, you have your shootout crates. Um you have your different levels of special issue, which is the gold military grade, which is the purple uh, rare, which is the blue uh, and uncommon, which is green and gray, which is uh, common, which it, it's actually harder to get a common one these days because nowadays, now, yeah, a, a default a crate in an encounter is in common now, uh, yeah. but you can still acquire them. Uh, there's also mm -hmm. uh, weapon crates uh and resource crates which are blue but um you know they, they give minimal xp um yeah. there's also i forgot what the name of it is but there's like the starter um oh. uh, crate which when you first start an account it's literally like the first crate that you have um, yeah i can't remember what it was called either because yeah. i did do it today and it looks like a great it, it actually looks like a blue crate but it's not you know because it, it has the same kind of symbol as a gray crate so it just gives you okay. your starting equipment, kind of. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. these are the uh, various crates that you can acquire. Um, you know, again, uh, you you could acquire them through uh, the donation at the back of your shelter uh, once a week. Uh, you could uh, acquire them by getting them in an encounter from either the airdrop that's dropped by, you know, the, the airplane or from uh, a red chest uh, within the encounter um, or... Um, you know, completing certain challenges, the harder the challenge, you know, uh, you may get uh, a crate um, or, uh, you know, the, the, the other game modes, uh, eliminations, oh, right. uh, eliminations, it's like, you know, you're, you're almost guaranteed a green crate, uh, even if you lose. Yeah. Um, so um, it's definitely a good way of farming crates. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Is sure. there anything else about the No, crates? that's, yeah, the only thing is, um, so when it comes to crates, uh, there's there's two I guess I don't know modes of thought with them. Um, save up the crates and then open them at once, especially like during a double XP weekend. Um, but you know if you're really short on supplies, then you know if you're got a few crates around, then opening them up helps get you weapons and resources. Obviously, you know the lower the level of the crate, the less the different things you're going to get. So like on a gray crate, the common crate. You're typically going to get like common level parts or or weapons and ammo, um, but then as you go up levels, you'll start getting the better stuff out of them. Um, common crates, like the gray ones, and the resource and uh, weapon crates, give the least amount of experience. So, like you get like twenty five experience for opening a common crate and fifty experience for opening one of those resource and and um, weapon ones. Those ones are almost not worth um, saving for a double XP because even with double XP, you're not getting much to advance in the level. The uncommon is where you start, you know, getting some significant experience. You get 250 experience for an uncommon, 500 for a rare, um, 750 for a military, and 1,000 for a special issue. So those ones holding on to them for a double XP event um, can be worth it because, you know, you're when you open them, then you'll get quite a boost to your XP. So that's that's the only thing is if if you're not hurting for stuff but you want more XP then holding on to them is good, but some of those lower end ones just open them anyways because even the boost you're not getting much out of it. So that's my thoughts, anyways. 
Yeah, uh, for me, it's like double XP everything. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but fifty. Yeah. Okay, great. I got fifty XP out of that common instead of twenty five. It's like, and, it, and your bar doesn't move at so all. There's so many. <laughs> there's so many. Like you, you get you acquire so many over time that, uh, and that, it takes you forever to open them right yeah. now because it's only you can only open one at a time. Yeah. If they ever bring in a multiple open option, then great. Yeah. Then hold on to them. But if you're yeah. sitting there opening 30 common crates. <laughs> oh, more. I, I've done more. I've done like 50, yeah. 60, 70, 80, 100. You're just. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'd love to see like a, like an option just to add like, you know, open all of my weapon and issue crates or weapon resource crates yeah. and stuff like that. Just not all, but just give it to me like that. Or a batch, and, batch open some or whatever. Yeah. yeah. If they, it'd be great if they come in with that option. I would just love it, <laughs> but right now it's yep. one at a time, and so that's why I open those those cheap ones up right away because I don't want to be sitting there for an hour opening crappy crates. I want to open the good crates, yep. <laughs> good good XP. <laughs> okay, uh, next we have uh, the next screen will be the uh, memento screen. So there's a collectibles in the game, and those can be fun, especially if you're a completionist. Um, there's typically there, there's three listed here. There's really four kinds of collectibles but the fourth one we'll talk about after these ones they're a little different um but these ones uh are, are special things you can find throughout the uh throughout an encounter there's trolls um and each troll and you know you can sort of see a outline of them and if you go into it like if, into the category it'll actually um, give you a hint on where you can find each particular type of troll and they're just like the little troll dolls but you'll hear them actually. So as you're going through an encounter, sometimes you hear some giggling. That'll be a troll doll. So if you um, if you know your hints of where they might be, you you know if you hear the giggle, you might think, okay, I'm in a, a wooded area right now. So very good chance it's like the the tree troll. It, it could be around the base of one of the trees near you. Um, there's one that's like a, a cave troll, so it's going to be typically underground. Or or some or you know some kind of covering of some kind. Um, there's a couple of different ones that like water. There's like a sea troll and a river troll. So yeah. there's all these different trolls. They're different levels of difficulty to find. Meaning they may not you know spawn. There's usually uh, I don't know if there's a limited I, number that can spawn in, a, in an I encounter. I think it's two or three per encounter. Uh, yeah. But uh, like you said, like there there's different rarities where it's like uh, the spawn rate is lower. So. Uh, you may find some of the more common ones. Like I think the metal troll is one of the more common ones and the fire troll, yeah. I think. So. Yeah, fire troll is really common. And so like a lot of those common ones you can find on almost almost every map, typically. But there are certain trolls um, that are a little harder to find and they may only sh show up uh, more more often on certain maps. I think like the, um, I think there's that one, the snow one, has a couple different maps it has to be a snowy map and i think it's typically one that has like elevations to it on like a higher oh, you up mean, areas you mean the air troll oh maybe it's the air troll i'm thinking of yeah I'm not the sure. air troll doesn't show up on yeah. every map yeah, yeah and the meadow troll only shows up on 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 yeah. certain maps as well yeah. um typically where there's like groups of flowers the purple flowers um so there's a few maps that have those so yeah certain trolls might be harder to find um but that's the trolls Another collectible is lighters. Uh, again, there's about ten different lighters that you can find in the in the game, and there are uh, certain lighters that are res again restricted to certain maps. Um, there's one called the fish or fisk lighter. It can only be found on the fisk map, um, which is typically in the big warehouse area, I think, is where you can find it. Yep. Um, uh, but boss, those yeah. like the gold, yeah, the boss's office, yeah, that's one area. Um, but in that big building itself. Um, I think there's a few different locations it can show up. Yep. Um, but there's a few, like the gold level ones, they're usually restricted to one, maybe two maps. Um, I think there's, um, and, but then there's like the more common ones, which is like the kitchen one. So almost any kitchen potentially could spawn the kitchen one. And it looks like it has a tomato on it. So each one has a little design. And so, you know, you can find those almost anywhere. Uh, the third type that they came out with was vinyls. And these are just, yeah, record albums you can find. Again, they have different levels. Um, when it comes to vinyls, I think they pretty much can be found on any map. I don't think there's any that are restricted to a particular map. No. But they're usually restricted to like four different, up to four different locations per map. So there'll be like certain houses that could potentially have the record. 
Yeah. Uh, so if you but start learning there, the spawn locations, yeah. yeah. And there's just one spawn per uh, map. Yeah, so it can take you a while to get, because they, um, they started out with, I think, is it was it 10, now they have 20, or is it something like that? Uh, I don't remember the, the exact number. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's probably close to that. And what's, what's kind of cool about them is as you find them, you can start hearing them in your shelter. So you have a rec the record player shows up in your shelter. Anything that you found, you can listen to. You can hear the whole song. Yeah. And so there's some really good songs actually for uh, for little com you know common ones. So that's pretty cool. The last kind of collectible are cassettes. These are um, a special a special story that they sort of came out with, and they released on various seasons. And um, they don't show up on the main screen. They show up in your in your shelter area, in the little weapons bunker you have. So there's a little area you can go into. It shows all the different weapons you currently kind of have, consumables you can, you know, you have and you can make. There's a little area that shows a cassette air, uh, tape, and it shows you what cassettes you've collected. Um, these are found in the special um, uh, lootable uh, events, like uh, like the time save, the... Um, uh, yeah, the Bard House and the um, the the lock container, lock container. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> <sighs> so many words to remember. <laughs> um, but uh, each of these, uh, so each each encounter will have two of these uh, special event locations you can go to, and in in those um, uh, either a safe or container, you can find a cassette. You can only carry one cassette with you at a time um and as you and you don't know what cassette you found because basically it's just sequential each time you find a cassette it's going to be the next one in the series yep. um they did a, a four different seasons so far i think where they've released cassettes yeah it's three approximate or three or four um each each season had up to 10 cassettes i think it was per season so as you find them it'll um, it sort of unlocks a story so um, and you can listen to them. I haven't even listened to them all yet, and I keep meaning to, but it's one of those things where I'm usually just playing the game, and I never think to listen to the cassettes. Uh, but you can go on YouTube if you actually want to spoil it for yourself. You can go onto YouTube and find people who have shown like shown all the different cassettes like and, and, and have the audio tracks playing so you can hear hear the whole story if you want. But if you want to unlock it yourself and 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 listen to it as you go, each time you bring a cassette back, it'll show up here. Um, once you have all of the cassettes, it's the one kind of collectible that if you keep picking it up, you'll get X more, you'll get XP for it. So it's called a broken cassette and then you get like 500 XP for it. So yeah, that's like the fourth type of collectible that they have. It's just, it's done a little differently. Yeah. Yeah. Well worth it. And yeah, it is actually. Yeah, totally. It, it, it is worth it. It's worth getting them for the story. And I've listened to some of the story. I just haven't listened to all of the story yet. So I need to go back in and listen to it. <laughs> and then with the mementos, there's another tab. And that tab is medals. These really have no effect on the game. Um, but as you complete different things within the game, it'll say you've unlocked this medal. They're kind of like achievements. And all of these different medals will have an equivalent achievement depending on your system. So like for Xbox, yeah. it's Xbox achievements. For PlayStation, it's trophies. And Switch, I don't know if Switch has actually an equivalent <laughs> or not, but they still, they still have these medals. And yeah. um, when you go to them, it'll be like, um, like one of them is like a medical one. It's like once you've gotten all of the uh, plans it's for cool. all the medicine things, um, you unlock that one um there's one for uh there's a rubik's cube in your shelter if you scramble it and then solve it you unlock that one so you can actually go through them all and see what they require to be to, un to be unlocked so it's just just a little thing you can play for it has no effect on the game it's just just an achievement yep um here talk and next one is leaderboards yeah. So we have the leaderboards, which have been just reworked uh, recently. Um, so now uh, it's broken down into game mode. Um, as, and then within each game mode tab, uh, there is a weekly, seasonal, and lifetime. Uh, and I and didn't grab screenshots for everything. I just gave this yeah. one screenshot. It's basically the same kind of thing, even though the achievements are different. You know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so like yeah. uh, every every like uh, game mode has different... Um, 
uh, stat categories that are being tracked. Um, and the, the weeklies get reset, uh, obviously, every week, seasonal every season. Um, and lifetime don't get uh, reset. But the lifetime, some categories did not track from the beginning because they weren't tracking them initially. So uh, there's like a random point in time where they actually started tracking some categories. But um, uh, and one thing that was added when they redid the leaderboard was the skill rating in so in the bottom left um so you have your skill rating um and you have a separate one again for the weekly seasonal and lifetime and uh based on your level uh the emblem will actually change color so uh in this um you can just see it above doc's uh webcam just right up there uh, yep. there it, it's blue so you know it's essentially like the rare um rarity but uh, it just means like, uh, actually not a hundred percent sure, but I believe it's cause, uh, it's in the top X percentile of, you know, uh, the rating type thing. And um, this is the beginner account. So it must start a blue <laughs> because, <laughs> so that must uh, be the lowest level. I don't know I'm because sure. this is like, I, I thought it was yeah. great, but any, anyways, uh, it, it could, yeah. I, I'm honestly not sure. Um, not sure either, but I, anyone's ever asked, but uh yeah so it, it's like it could change color like i've seen uh uh you know military grade type colors and whatnot um but i've never seen a special issue i don't think but uh nonetheless uh so this is where you you see uh y your various stats for uh every game mode uh and then as you uh progress so like every week you need to play a minimum amount of games in order to actually see like how you rank against other players too. Uh, because if you don't play enough games, then they're not going to actually show you um, compared to other players. And uh, it will actually tell you like, you need to play one more encounter or one more shootout uh, in order to see uh, the stat the stats for yep. uh, other people as well. Um, one thing that we do miss uh, with this uh, update uh, to the leaderboards is we used to be able to see how uh, people on our friends list uh, we're doing type thing so you could yep. actually like, see them um but uh, maybe one day we'll be able to see it uh, yeah again. so right now you can just compare yourself to everybody so and when i say everybody it just sort of shows you where you are on the on the list and you can see who's above and below you and that's it you can't scroll up and down unfortunately or you can see what the top players how they are and then it'll show you the yeah. top players of that category and what they're at so you can sort of see okay i'm at 15 15 of this particular one and that's my my um and that's just my what's behind me right now this little level thing showing where i am so i'm 15 15 or 13 sorry 15 13 and so yeah. if you if you were to see the top players that probably be at like 16 17 18 who knows how, how high they, it goes but that that that's we're showing you where you're at and what the top players are at um and it another thing that you used to show what they don't show currently is um when you bring something like what you did in your last encounter so like yeah. if um like my kills are plus one you know, I got like if I got one kill in, in this current encounter, it, it used to show you um, what you got the last encounter. Like if it was zero or whatever, then it, it used to be nice to see, you know, if you had yeah. what, how you compared from encounter to encounter. But you don't have that right now. But, you know, it could be adjusted. It, yeah. This is this whole new layout is quite different than how it used to be, where you just saw your lifetime and stats and that was it and there was like one stat block and well like block but it was like there were different stats that check checked it was like six or seven different stats but that was it so now they give you a lot more options to see which is nice and um, i'm sure they'll adjust it as we go yeah and it'll actually say to um because I, I think you said this is a new account from this week uh but yeah. like for each category like or um weekly seasonal um, it'll actually say what the previous ranking was. So you could right. compare how you did from last season or last week type thing. But yeah. uh, aside from that, like you can't see historically, it's like, oh, week two of the season, how did I do? Uh, it's just right. literally the, the previous week or previous season type thing. Yeah. And actually here it says week 18. It's like one day, six hours, 59 minutes until the end of that week. So, you know, um, Sunday night, it'll reset to the next week and the season will might not give a, a countdown yet, but same kind of thing. I'll tell you how much is left to, to change those seasonal stats. And then elimination shootout, 
same kind of thing. It just shows you how you're doing in those particular game modes. So, and they never had those ones before, which was, so it's, it's really nice to have those now if, if you're really into those game modes for sure. Yep. And then, um, I think the last sort of set of screens are, is it? Oh no. Oh, I have to, uh, sorry. Just move one sec. Boop. Boop. Okay. Last sort of set of screens are the equip menus. So this is where you can change your loadout. Um, as you can see here, I'm, I'm rocking a Thompson with, uh, some ammo, um, and a couple healing consumables. Uh, so uh, th then this basically shows your, your bag, your bag has, um, uh, 25 different slots. And so, uh, the more you take in, you know, the less you have less room you have to necessarily bring stuff out with you. Uh, so, you know, it's a trade-off. Um, you have four weapon slots. So it's like two larger weapon slots and two smaller ones. Smaller ones are typically um, pistols, can be knives. Um, there are some smaller like um, submachine guns yep. and uh, shotguns that can go in those slots as well. And then the larger ones are going to be like your larger SMGs, assault rifles, machine guns, and um, rifles. And, and special, there's one special issue weapon, which is the crossbow. <laughs> um, yep. Uh, cross was kind of kind of tough to use, but uh, it's out there. Um, but yeah, so you can choose what weapons you want um, in your stash. Uh, there's different categories. There's the uh, weapons, ammo, and consumables. Uh, when you go into weapons, when you select a weapon to to use, it'll automatically pop up and say, "How much ammo do you want to take with this weapon?" So you can choose right there, you know, to add ammo to your bag for it. Um, and the ammo is typically done in stacks. So like for this uh, Thompson, it's stacks of 20. I took three stacks with it. And then when you go into the encounter, um, it'll be auto loaded for you. So when you first get in, it'll have a full clip. So it'll take it out of your inventory um, as you go into the encounter. Um, and any weapons you have will be fully, will be loaded as you, as you go. So if you have multiple weapons, they'll be loaded. As long as you brought ammo. If you didn't bring any ammo, then well, I guess you're gonna have to find some ammo. <laughs> um, but the ammo tab is also where you can go to craft ammo. So like all of these tabs are also where you go to craft. And I think I brought, I show, this is for deconstruct. I'm gonna go back uh, forward here a little bit because um, I should have done this in a certain order. Uh, yeah. So here's where you can craft something. Uh, when you go into the consumables or weapons, it'll it'll show you what you currently have. Uh, for weapons, it'll be in categories. So you can find, you know, you can sort of, you can go to like, I want a rifle. You can go to the rifle category, open it and see the different rifles you own and can cre and craft. If you can make it, I'll have a wrench beside it, like these uh, particular ones here. And um, you, you don't necessarily have to have the plans to make it. As long as you have parts, you can you can make make it. So like all of these, I don't have the plans for any of this right now, but because I found some, um, parts for them, I can craft them. Um, yeah. When you have parts, it's an instant craft. It'll like make it right away. But if you don't have parts, and you have the plan, and you have the right level of uh, crafting table, yeah. then you can start crafting it, and it'll take a certain amount of time depending on what it is. Um, your your there's different levels like the different color levels um, correspond. So it's like this gray, green, blue purple and, and gold. Uh, but with gray, actually, there's two versions of gray when it comes to um, consumables and weapons. There's plentiful, and then there's common. Plentiful are like your really basic stuff. Um, but there are some good weapons in it. Uh, there's the uh, um, the Mosin rifle is considered plentiful. And the, uh, the VZ-58 assault rifle is plentiful. And that's not a great assault rifle, but it's a good starting assault rifle. And if it's plentiful, it's usually pretty quick to make. So you, um, I think it, I think it's even just less than a minute, maybe around a minute. I don't know for sure, yeah. but um, and if it's a consumable, same kind of thing. Um, I think most of the consumables, if they're gray, they're common. I, I'm not sure if any, there are any plentiful ones, but there might be. But again, um, if you have the plan, it, it's it's not usually too long. I think it's like eighteen. I think it's eighteen seconds right now for a, like a like a bandage or a, at the, at the, at the beginning level. So it's pretty, you know, not too long. You have to wait, but you still have to wait a little bit. 
And uh, for consumables, those build times, as we mentioned, can go down based on your uh, certain shelter upgrade that'll reduce that. So there's a point where you can get your consumables if you fully maxed out your shelter upgrade to instant craft. All of you, all, no matter what the consumable, you can if you have the plan, you'll be able to make it instantly. But that yeah. takes quite a while. It'll be a while before you get to that. So a lot of grinding. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then the same thing with weapons. There's, there's like I said, there's different levels of weapons, and they take longer to make based on um, their uh, their their color grade or whatever. Uh, but with, when it comes to weapons or consumables, there's the option to use crowns to craft it instantly. And it, 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 it of course, it varies depending on the level of the um, thing. Like, uh, I think a bandage and a disinfectant, it was like one crown to instantly craft it. So I could wait 18 seconds or I could spend a crown. So I was going to yeah. wait 18 seconds, but <laughs> it gets it gets quite a bit more expensive as you go. But then, like, sometimes it's you could be waiting days for some of the... Uh, special issue weapons to be crafted i think one or two days potentially or no maybe it's hours it might just be 18 hours yeah, yeah it might be 18 hours or something like that it's like 12 or something yeah hours. there are there are a couple 12. different ones i think there's a special issue that's might be 12 but then i think there are some that are 18 i was thinking days but it's actually just hours but still 18 hours is a long time to wait for uh for a weapon so um, weapons are one of those things that's you, you can get quite a few in your in your shelter. Like uh, as you start going out there and and looting and getting back, you know um, you can find weapons in lots of different locations. Always, uh, if you if you're looking for even basic weapons, look in bedrooms. Um, look, at, kitchens are good places for knives, and the melee system has been improved to the point where knives are actually useful. Yeah. Um, but then in bedrooms, in like bedside tables or in other um, wardrobes, you can find pistols, you can find rifles. So there are uh, things you can find within houses. And then in your special loot events, there's typically some good weapons in, in those. So if you can get one of those, you can get some good weapons. Um, there's also a thing called the buried cache. Uh, when you're out there, you can find a key and the key will show you on the map where the special buried cache is. Uh, so if you run to that and you're, if you're the first one there, you can dig it up, unlock it, and get everything that's in it. Um, typically, it's, it's, it's parts and other uh, consumables and, and resources, but they're really high-level parts. They're like gold parts for making gold weapons. So or it's something to keep your eye open. And, or gold consumables. That's right. Weapons yeah. and consumables. Yeah. Um, so the buried cache is something that spawns in every map. Um, and there's like 20 to 30 different locations that potentially could be. And if you, but you can't open it unless you find the key, you can find it without the key. You just can't get into it. So yep. you need to find the key. And there's usually about six or so versions of that key out on the map somewhere to find. So once you have the key, you can go to it and open it. So, um, but yeah, so this was crafting stuff. Um, is, is done through here. Like here's crafting the Thompson um, submachine gun, 15 seconds. Um, if you have uh, the plan, which I do, and it takes 950 materials. So that's where your your materials comes into play for for weapons and for consumables. Is if you you need to have a bunch of materials to make the things. But if you have the parts, again, you don't use any materials. You're just using the particular parts. Here you need three parts to make a, a Thompson for free. And then it um, will come with a stack of uh, ammo, usually too. And then there's deconstructing. Um, deconstructing, so when you go into the deconstruction screen, it gives you all the different categories. If it's a weapon, ammo, consumables, um, resources that you have in your shelter, all that can be con deconstructed. And when you deconstruct it, what you're doing is you're breaking it down to its base materials. And then that materials at the top of your, um, of your screen will go up based on what you deconstruct. And so here, I'm just showing, you know, here's a bugle. If I were to deconstruct this bugle, I would get 3,000 materials for it. And you make um, a lot of people cry. And you make a lot of people cry because it's a nice weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and it also, like, just to really rub it in, it shows you its stats. It's like, if you break this down, you're not going to have this weapon that has single fire, burst fire, and full auto. And does this damage in this range <laughs> but um and it's a purple but uh <laughs> and and when it comes and this is the one area 
where if you have multiple of something, you can do it all at once. So if I had yep. 66 of these, I could break them all down, <laughs> yep. um, but I would get a lot of materials for it. And so, you know, it could, it could be handy depending on what you're trying to craft. Um, and then that a value that you get for it um, is going to be changed by one of your shelter upgrades. And that's the, um, is that that's not the distillation one? I think it's the chem is that the chemical one or the water distillation? Uh, for increasing uh the cost. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, the the value. I think it's water. I think you're right. I think it's the water distillation. So there's a wa the water distillation um upgraded for your shelter. As you go up in levels on that, it helps um with your breakdown of your deconstruction. So you'll get more materials as you deconstruct something. Yep. And there are um challenges for deconstructing. So they could say deconstruct uh so many bugles and so if you do it yeah you, you'll get a, a special reward you're also going to make a lot of people cry but you know it happens yep. <laughs> sometimes yep. you do what you got to do <laughs> um and i don't think you mentioned you could actually deconstruct co uh parts as well and oh, parts as well uh, yeah the only difference is if you're deconstructing parts you're not getting the same amount as deconstructing the full weapon but it's like yeah. a minor decrease in what you would get um so yeah. it, honestly if you really want to like deconstruct uh parts uh you know you know you might as well take that little hit um uh, because instead of crafting it and then deconstructing it um you know the difference isn't that huge so right yeah and uh same with materials um like you you don't uh not the same with materials but when you were deconstructing materials um the level of the material will you know determine how much uh you get for it um it's not the kind of thing that you're probably not going to do right away it's like maybe once you finished yeah. your shelter that's like that's when i've deconstructed materials because you're just resources amassing resources. that's what i meant resources thank you yeah. not materials resources um yeah because once you finished your um your shelter then they're not really good for anything yet uh there's a potential shelter upgrade coming so we'll, we, we don't know what it's going to need yet so that's one reason to hold on to um different resources but we don't know what we're going to need so uh but if you need the materials you know you're always going to get more resources because that's that's the game you're going out there you're looting you're getting um uh resources you're getting weapons you're getting consumables and bringing it back so and that's another thing we didn't kind of mention yet is uh your resource value <clears throat> one of the things you can track on the um leaderboards is uh extracted resource value it used to be called loot value now it's called restricted retract <sighs> extracted resource value <laughs> i was trying to say that and it's like that doesn't flow off the tongue um and we have a whole episode on that so check that out too um there's an episode talking about loot value um it's a little older but it's essentially still relevant it, you know not much has changed for that um so there's two different things when it when it comes to encounters there's experience and there's uh, the resource value those are the two different stats you, you kind of track experience is used for getting up in bat battle pass levels and resource value really it's just for um the leaderboards you know trying to get your average you know high as high on those particular leaderboards as possible if you're into that kind of thing that's something to, to keep keep up keep track of but we do have some episodes on that we have episodes on getting the most out of your xp and episodes on and on resource value so we'll put the current links down in these in the description of this as well so if you want some more uh, material on on how to improve your game check them out um but also check out there's a lot of good big um bigger related content out there uh, now that you're getting to getting into the game uh, make sure to check them out because yeah there's a lot of people who really love this game um and you know there's some maybe some people who aren't creating or playing the game much anymore but they still have the content out there so it's worth checking out um but just look and you know, look for the different uh content that's out there did we have anything else here oh i just had a, a couple screenshots this is of your when you're looking at your uh, weapon bunker um you'll see all the different weapon spots on the uh, on the walls and so you know they're mostly going to be empty at first as you find weapons and bring them back to your shelter, it'll it'll put a version of that weapon on the wall. And if you get skins, it'll show you what your current equipped skin is. And it's also where you'll see plans. So as you see here, I have like the 
right in front of me is the plan for the uh, the Tommy gun. Um, so it has the plan right behind the weapon. As you find more plans, it'll show them on the wall. And if you have the weapon in your inventory, it'll show it with it. So if you, like, say you use the last of a particular weapon, um, you might still have the plan on the wall, but it won't show the weapon on the wall. So that's that's a that's a a reason to always keep at least one of a weapon <laughs> for me, anyways, just so I can look in here and see it. In all the little crates on the floor, that's where you, the different consumables that you um, have and can make. So if you have the plans for it, it'll show the plan with it. Um, and if you have any, it'll be in one of those little crates. And it has like a little each crate will have a little outline showing this is what goes in this crate. If you don't have any, like smoke grenades or um, portable signal detectors, that kind of thing. Um, we do have like an episode on tools, on different tools you can uh, and how how to use them. So another another one to check out. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep yeah. plugging each episode we have. We we only have eighty six or so. Um, you know, you yeah. might want to skip some of the ones about seasons, but if you want to see what a season was like, go check it out. <laughs> um, um, do do we want to talk about uh, quickly about how encounters what different things yeah. are found in an encounter? So uh, in an encounter. Um, you know, you'll see an icon which kind of looks like a, a little like a radio tower. So that's your signal detector. Um, so if you hit that, uh, it'll show uh, the location at the time where every enemy outlander is located. Um, the cooldown is about two minutes um, and no one else can use it in that meantime. Uh, it's typically a hotspot um, for, uh, you know, uh, the encounters. Uh, there's also, um, uh, it, it, again, it looks like a, a radio tower, but this time there's like a lightning bolt, like an electricity that's the disruptor. Uh, so that jams any signals from the signal tower or uh, a portable. Um, so you won't be detected while you're there. Um, there's kind of like, um, oh my God, how do you describe a comm station icon it almost looks like a little building with an antenna on it i guess i don't know yeah uh, but uh, what uh, i so could do is um here, give me once oh no i may not be able to i was going to um yeah don't, uh, don't worry about it get a map up i was gonna to try to get a map up but i, I can't oh. as no, easy as i thought it. i could um so uh, there's a comm station uh there's up uh there's usually three of them on every uh encounter map um so this uh you get to apply uh, either buffs or debuffs, or I forget what they're technically called. Uh, but uh, basically, you could move the airdrop. Uh, you could buff it where it's going to include some ammo, um, some bandage, and an antibiotic as well. Um, you could um, give it quick release where it's like literally, it's like the press of a button will unlock it uh, and put it in your inventory. Um, oh my God, what's the other? One uh, other, the other buff, yeah. What's the yeah, other you buff? can move it. Um, there was the uh, quick, quick release. release. There was stealth it. Oh, stealth is the other one where uh, you know, if it's stealth, no one will see you on the map because when you have an airdrop, it doesn't matter if it's the red crate or the um, uh, the actual airdrop from the plane. Uh, you will be marked on the map, so you can stealth it. Um, and then you could do the debuffs, which. I forget what it's not technically a debuff anymore. They changed buff and debuff, but I forgot what the actual terminology is. Um, but um, you could uh, make it overweight, which is going to add weight to it. Uh, it's going to slow you down. Um, you could booby trap it where it would basically set a booby trap to the uh, map and you'd have to hit the key combination uh, to unlock it. Um, there's a decoy, which it would make it uh, a second airdrop, which would, uh, if someone go, would go and loot it, uh, you would have a single nail uh, within it, uh, but yeah. you would know the location of the correct one. Uh, and then there's radiation, uh, or you could radiate it, I mean. Uh, so the minute you pick it up, uh, it's actually radiated, so it has the same effect of uh, the encounter radiation. Um, uh, so I did that's... bring up a map here. So this is a, just a one of the maps is called Battery, and there's two versions of it. But this is just an example of a map. So as as DJ was mentioning, um, there's the different icons you'll see on your map, um, and there's like like at the at the bottom you'll see there's one that looks like an X that is around a door. That's the um, Bard House. 
that's one of the special loot events. And then just next to it, not, not far from it, is one called the Time Safe. So those are special loot events. You'll see them on the map. And all the little look like radios. Those are all the comm stations he was talking about for the boot yep. buffs and debuffs. And then there's a couple different towers um, on this one uh, in the upper sort of right of the map by, by a comm station is one that's the signals detector he was mentioning. And then there's somewhere on here, oh, by the airdrop area where the name airdrop is, that's the, yep. um, what do you call it? Again, uh, disruptor. Blocks everything. Disruptor, disruptor tower. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. what it so, looks like. Yeah. So, uh, barred house, uh, basically it's like a room that's like all the windows and doors are barred. Uh, so you have to break in and you unlock the safe. It takes about a minute, I believe, uh, for it to open. And then once you open it, you get the loot inside. Uh, time vault, uh, there's two switches you have to flip uh, in order to uh, open it. Um, and you have to hit each switch within 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Uh, so in order to unlock it, uh, the yeah. other event, there's always two loot events. Uh, and but there's technically three available. The other one's lock container. It basically looks like a little contain. It's a container with three padlocks on it where you have to unlock. Uh, you could shoot them or you could, um, you know, do the the combination. Which you just scroll through the numbers and your controller will vibrate or the number will flash green when you have the right combination. Yep. Um, so th those are the loot events uh, per se. Um, as Doc mentioned, there's an airdrop. Uh, zone so that's where typically like the airdrop will fall um, and with the comm stations you can move it uh, once uh, all those buffs and debuffs could only be applied once by the way yeah uh, not uh, a second time or whatnot um trying to think there's a limit else. of four interactions before the comm stations stop working so max as soon as, max max not minimum max four no no not minimum yeah max because um as soon as a fourth thing has been done to it, whether it be a yeah. buff or debuff, then they stop working. Yeah. Yeah. And basically up until the airdrop, like a minute before the airdrop comes, then or 30 seconds, uh, you could use it as well. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing that's not here on the map, uh, Doc mentioned the buried cache. So if you find uh, the key for it, uh, it would be marked on the map. Uh, I can't actually see like the the big picture of it. Uh, it's very small for me, but uh, I'm assuming. And this is an older there. map. Yeah, it's an older map. So the exit symbols are the older exit symbols. They look like houses now, whereas here it looked like a almost like a camping symbol. Yeah. But it's essentially the same. It's the same setup. Yeah. yeah. So basically, you go into the counters. You could leave at any point. Uh, the red marks means that those are locked exits. Uh, so now it's like if you look at your map. It will actually show you what resource you need to unlock um, yeah. those exits with. The old style never told you you didn't know until you got there. Now it tells you you're going to need electronics, you're going to need wire. Yeah. Um, and and like just rule of thumb too, uh, if there's uh, typically like a dock with a boat on it, it's usually fuel. Uh, if it's like a broken down sailboat, it's usually wire. Uh, if it's a busted boat, it's usually electronics. Um, yeah. So typically, uh, you have Grantheim Valley, which has the middle exit. Uh, that instead of uh, unlocking an exit, you could actually lock it because uh, there's a ladder, and you could cut the lines to the ladder, so it would break the ladder, yep. so no one else would can follow you. Uh, Phil Canton has like uh, in the middle, there's a cave, um, which you could actually lock. So there's like a cage door. Uh, so you, from inside the exit, you could actually hit that, uh, and it would swing the door close. Uh, there is another switch where you could activate it and it would reopen it, but um, that's like the yeah. opposite of unlocking. Um, and then... Yeah, Phil Canton is one of those interesting maps because it has a couple different cave systems, and yeah, one has that exit, um, and it can be. Uh, you, you, I, it's a it's a I'm gonna call it a, a sweatier map. So it's like a a map where a lot of um, people who are usually quite good at the game. Who who like to snipe? You know, a lot of potential sniping in that map, but also people can troll quite a bit in that map. So like it, th that locked that exit, they can lock and unlock. Sometimes people like to hide in there, so you gotta be careful. <laughs> if you know if you're going mm -hmm. in there, just be cautious. Um, but it's a fun map too. It's, it's, it has a lot of uh, neat features in it, and it can be. Um, and there's a, I think it's is it the storm troll that has a you can find on the there's a crashed helicopter. 
And one of the locations this particular troll, and I think it's a storm troll, can be found is on the tail of this helicopter. So you have to call, get up onto that tail and up to get it. There's other places you can find it, but I just think it's a neat area that there's a troll potentially on that helicopter. So yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's what typically an encounter kind of looks like. Um, the encounters typically last like 10 to 12 minutes or so uh, before radiation actually comes in. Um, as Doc mentioned, like the icons for the exits, uh, if you look at this one right here, bottom right, there's actually like red waves. Uh, that's where the radiation is going to come from. Uh, so, you know, what there will be a ticking sound um, and then a buzzer, which is your tomato timer, which uh, I kind of have one right here. Uh, but um, I got one too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so tomato so timer. There you go. Um, <laughs> so basically, uh, it means radiation's coming. So it's going to sweep over the map. Uh, radiation will reduce your max health uh, until it's zero. Uh, but if you make it to the exit, um, it it doesn't matter if you run out of health, uh, you will survive. Uh, yeah, as soon as that counter starts ticking, you're safe. Yeah. Unless someone uh, kills you, exit. you can still die. Yeah. Uh, in the exits um so yeah that's that's roughly what the encounters are you basically go yep. in you want to get as much loot as you can um the airdrop necessarily isn't required because again like especially early on you want to try to build up your your shelter with getting your resources and whatnot um uh, the loot events again the best loot is not necessarily there so you can get better resources if you actually learn the maps, um, yep. you know, because typically like chems, you, you'll find it around bodies of water. Um, but just go in, explore the maps, because not all these places where it's loot events that are, are going to actually have valuable loot. Um, yeah, loot events are a hotbed of activity. So they're, they're quite often fought over um, or someone might be camping them. Um, so but like like I said earlier, you can find a weapon almost you know, not necessarily anywhere, but there are, there are weapon crates. I, mean, I don't know if I mentioned that. There are yep. weapon crates around the, the, the place. Quite often, they just have parts in them, but sometimes they do have, like, a, a, you know, a common weapon in them. So you can find a weapon almost anywhere. So there, there's these things people like to do called zero-to-hero runs. Um, yep. We go in with nothing, find a weapon if you and try to survive. You know, that, that that's and that's totally possible to do. Um, the loot events just typically have, a, like, a higher-caliber weapon in them. Like so, if you want a really good weapon, you know that that's a, that's a reason to go to them. But if you're just trying to survive, it's a, you know reason to stay away from them because they, they tend to be or, fought over. Yeah, yeah, or wait till like the fight's over. It's in in the encounter, and you swing by and yeah. pick up the scraps. Um, yeah, because also... you can only carry two weapons, so or like two main weapons, and so quite often yeah. someone will go over there, and it might have two or three weapons in it. They can't take them all, or they leave behind a you know a, a decent weapon to get a better weapon. So you can go in and grab something. You know, may not have ammo yeah. for it, but later on yeah. you can get ammo. Uh, there, there's also encounters. Uh, you can find combination lock boxes where it's like there's a combination again. Uh, you scroll through the numbers. Uh, when the number is right, it'll flash green. Or if your uh, controller vibrates, it'll, it'll vibrate yeah. if it's on. Um, and then that has resources. It'll have weapons, ammo, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, th that's just a rough idea of what you'll see in an encounter. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. yeah, for sure. And um, what else is it going to throw in there? Uh I think that's that's a lot of it. Um, one thing I didn't mention when it came to crafting, uh, I did say that when you have the plan for something, you craft it, you get some ammo. Uh, when it comes to ammo, when you want to craft ammo, uh, you have to have the plan for at least one weapon that uses that ammo. So, yep. uh, so as, as soon as you get like a, the plan for, and quite often there's like um, there's a few different guns that use. Uh, all use the same ammo, like in the different sort of series. Like there's the ES-16 um, shares ammo with the Bugle um, assault rifle, the uh, M249 machine gun, the uh, L85 machine um, assault rifle, and the L86 uh, machine gun as well. So you get all these different, and the A1, there's the A1 um, mm -hmm. rifle as well. They all use the same ammo. So as soon as you get the plans for any one of those guns then you can make the ammo for all of the guns um, but if you haven't found the plans yet then you won't be able to make the ammo so that's a 
kind of a thing too. Just to keep in yeah. mind. So, yeah, there, but, there's quite a, quite a bit to learn. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. like Doc was saying, uh, ch check out different content creators on the various like live streaming or even YouTube uh, for recorded content. Uh, you know, uh, check out the partners, check out the non partners because like everyone will have different play styles and you know different ideas on how you should approach uh, the game and just find something that kind of adapts to you. Um, yeah. Because j just like the different weapons, uh, it's all about personal preference, uh, your play style. So, um, yeah. And um, maps too. So go back through our catalog. We've done um, episodes on every map. So if you want to find out anything about a map, go check it out. Um, some of the some, like I said, some of the uh, symbology on the maps might be a little outdated because it's changed a little. But for the most part, the maps are still generally the same as when we did our episodes on them. So you can find out a lot about there. Um, we, we've done episodes on loot, you know, where to find certain types of loot. Um, that might have changed a little bit since we've done those episodes and we may need to redo them. But still gives you a good general idea of where you can find certain types of loot uh, that you might be looking for. Um, but yeah, uh, go yeah go back through our catalog because we, we've definitely covered a lot of this. But uh, this we wanted to get out again because there's going to be new, if you might be coming from PC, or you might just be starting all from fresh from on one of the consoles, and we want to just do a little bit of an updated. Hey, this is bigger. This is what a lot of this means. Probably would have been better if we could have given, given more examples of stuff. But you know, this is get you get you started, right? It's a bit of a longer episode for us. Um, <laughs> there's that. Uh, so you, you may you may be you may have been watching this in chunks. You know, as we went over each category, maybe you came back to it. We appreciate it if you did. Um, but again, you know please like share and subscribe uh it helps you know uh more people who yep. see this maybe get uh, even if they haven't played bigger before maybe uh it'll expose them to bigger you know if it, maybe a friend of yours who um youtube knows you're connected and then you you watch this video and shared it maybe he'll, they'll see it and hey what's this and and check out the game because you know we've been doing we've been playing this game for four years now and you know we still love it and it, and it's, it keeps growing and now that PC players are coming, um, it could get even bigger. So we, we uh, everybody who uh, knows about it, just you know, gives, gives it more reason to stick around and uh, get better. Yep. Yeah. Okay, uh, but I think that's a great place to stop. So um, it's been a couple hours. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> if you if you if you're at this point, um, and uh, yeah, uh, I've been Dr. Anton. And I am forever GJ Spencer. Indeed, um, we'll have all of our links in the bio, in the bottom for our streams for for our different socials. Please check them out. Um, but until next time, stay safe in the Outlands, and have a great night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Chance and flame, flame.